separating the border of Nepal and Tibet and located in the Mahalangar Himal section of the Himalayas, Mount Everest is undisputedly the highest mountain on Earth with a height of over 29,000 feet. It is surrounded by stunning valleys, glaciers, and steep ridges that lead up to its snow-capped summit. However, there are many bizarre things surrounding Mount Everest that have got people talking. Don't miss a moment of this video as we unravel the 15 most mysterious things that have happened on Mount Everest, sure to make you speechless. Number 15. The Green Boots of Mount Everest If you ever want to climb up the slopes of Mount Everest, you will come across a dead, undecayed man with green cough-lock mountaineering boots on his feet. He is named Green Boots. Despite countless corpses on Mount Everest, Green Boots remain a trail marker for other mountaineers. So how did this particular corpse find his way there? Green Boots is believed to be an Indian named Sewang Paljor, who was just 28 years old when he died. After completing 10th grade, he dropped out of school to help support his family. He grew up around the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh region surrounded by mountains. After quitting school, Paljor joined the Indo-Tibetan Border Police, which was formed in 1962. The men who worked in the Indo-Tibetan Border Police Service fully specialized in high-altitude landscapes. During his time on the job, Paljor climbed several peaks. In 1996, the Indo-Tibetan Border Police formed an elite group of climbers to summit Mount Everest on the north side. Sewang Paljor was picked up as one of the members. The team's commander was Commandant Mohinder Singh. Paljor, along with seven other climbers from the Indo-Tibetan Police Border Unit, including Deputy Leader Harbhajan Singh, were chosen for the summit team due to their strength and passion. May 10, 1996 is a tragic day in the history of Mount Everest. Paljor suffered a terrible end when he was unable to maintain control of his body during a powerful blizzard. He fled the storm by crawling toward a small cave. He made vain attempts to shield himself from the storm until he passed away. Number 14. Ghosts of Everest As mentioned before, frozen bodies litter the Mount of Everest. This is a grim reminder of the perilous nature of climbing the world's highest peak. These bodies, some of which have been there for decades, are preserved by the extreme cold and altitude, creating an eerie sight for climbers who pass by. As one climbs higher on the mountain, the bodies become more frequent and visible, with some even used as landmarks for navigation. Some bodies are still clothed in brightly colored climbing gear, a stark contrast against the white snow and blue ice. Others are partially buried in snow, with only a hand or a foot showing from the frozen surface. According to Pemba Dorji, a Tibetan native who experienced ghost sightings firsthand while he approached the summit from the south, he is said to have seen black shadows coming towards him, stretching their hands and begging for something to eat. With corpses lying around each height and corner, climbers often hallucinate, mistaking these frozen bodies for living climbers, adding to the spooky atmosphere. Number 13. The Death That Never Happened Four campers perished on Everest in 1924 while enjoying the British Mount Everest expedition. Mountaineers sent to retrieve the body of a Slovakia climber who died due to altitude sickness found the bodies of these four in two separate tents. They discovered the four bodies were completely preserved as though in a time capsule, frozen in the snow and ice. They were discovered at a secluded region of the mountain known as Second Step. This was where they had apparently passed away. No one knows what happened and there were no clear signs of injury or trauma. Also, no group on the mountain reported any missing members. Number 12. The Rainbow Valley of Mount Everest A region known as Rainbow Valley can be found below Mount Everest's northern crest. This region of the valley is higher than 8,000 meters. The area is littered with the dead bodies of climbers who failed in their attempt to get to the summit. There are several corpses in the Rainbow Valley section. The region is known as Rainbow Valley because of the multicolored view it gives from a distance, much like a rainbow. Dead bodies there are covered with jackets in the colors blue, red, orange, and green. Also, there are tents, cans, and oxygen tanks among the colorful trash that has been discarded. Some climbers refer to this place as the Everest Death Zone. Each year, a large number of climbers attempt to reach the summit. Some of them succeed, while others give up and descend. And regrettably, some people pass away while reaching or leaving the peak. At least 11 individuals perished in 2019. Nearly all of them spent time in the danger zone. 
the year turned out to be one of the worst Everest seasons in recent memory. Some expedition organizations blamed these deaths on overcrowding on the route to the summit. There seems to be only a single way to the summit, and this often causes mountaineers to wait for a long time on the trail. According to the Kathmandu Post, 250 climbers made an attempt to reach the summit on May 22, 2019. Many climbers had to wait in line to ascend and descend. The zone's surroundings also include harsh weather, low oxygen levels, and powerful wind gusts. Anyone who can't survive in this little space that takes a lot of time for people to pass through gets pushed off the path by the more desperate climbers. As a result, Rainbow Valley ends up becoming the final resting place for the pushed ones, and their corpses remain fresh due to snow that won't let it decay. As it is dangerous to move dead bodies, no one is willing to take a risk on the already dead climber. Still, moving a corpse requires several people for a single body. The colorful area that makes up the Rainbow Valley is created by the chunks of dead bodies in the area. Number 11. Himalayan Goral Himalayan Gorals are a rare species found on Everest. They are commonly called the Grey Goral. This species belongs to the bovid family of Himalayas, weighing about 35 to 42 kilograms and length of 95 to 130 centimeters. Goral is a rare creature with dark stripes, a gray-brown coat, and tan legs. Young goral are weaned at seven or eight months, and they can reach sexual maturity at around three years. Another thing about this animal is that it can live for 14 or 15 years, and the females usually give birth to a single offspring after 170 to 218 days of gestation. Goral is crepuscular, which means that it is most active in the morning and late in the evening. It eats and drinks in the morning and then spends the day dozing out on a rock edge. The Himalayan goral is very strong and can run pretty fast. The secret is, you may not see this creature when you visit Mount Everest. This is because the animal's coloration is very good for camouflaging, so it is very hard to see it. Number 10. Massive Poop Mount Everest has a pool of problems, and feces piling up is just one of them. As hundreds of people attempt to climb the world's tallest mountain each year, spending weeks at four different camps on their way, and adjusting to the low levels of oxygen in the air, pooping is inevitable. According to the Sagarmatha Pollution Control Committee, tasked with cleaning up Everest, climbers leave behind up to 28,000 pounds of excrement yearly in one camp. That is almost the size of two fully grown male elephants. Besides, the pits of poop and urine surrounding camps are becoming a serious environmental and health problem that has got so many people talking. Dawa Stephen Sherpa, an Everest expedition leader since 2008, said that urgent action must be taken to address the issue of poop in the area which he sees as a health hazard. In 2013, another observer named Professor Pablo Figueroa put the situation this way. Given the lack of an efficient solid waste management system, for decades expedition members emptied their bowels wherever they could when they had the urge. As a result, human feces have accumulated in the snow, and streams of excrement are periodically regurgitated by the glaciers up in the mountain. Gary Porter, a retired climber and engineer from Washington State, believed that these feces will eventually find their way into the river and contaminate the water. Adding to this problem is the cold weather in Everest, which makes poop not decompose easily. But Porter is still finding a noble way to solve the poop problem. Porter and a fellow past climber of Mount Everest, Dan Mazur, introduced the Mount Everest Biogas Project to try and eliminate this environmental hazard. However, while this project is widely used and easy to construct, it is also difficult to operate at high altitude like in Mount Everest. Also, the project is quite expensive as Porter estimated that the first biogas digester would cost about half a million dollars. It seems the simple solution is for climbers to dispose of their poop responsibly. Number 9. Extraterrestrial Spotted on Mount Everest Centuries have passed, but the mystery behind aliens remains unsolved, even to UFO hunters and scientists. Lately, a bizarre object was spotted hovering on Mount Everest. A footage taken in 2012 showed a spooky black shape object making its way through the sky. The rare image was captured by filmmaker David Breshears using sophisticated software to stitch together 477 images to create a detailed photo of the mountain range. With the black shape seen in the sky, 
Alien enthusiasts claim the object can't be a drone or a helicopter due to its flight height. The unbelievable image has made alien hunters and scientists speculate that the area may be home to secret Area 51-type bases, which are hidden underground. There is a claim that the borders between India and China are not penetrable due to the presence of extraterrestrials. According to a declassified document which surfaced in 1998, there is a claim of seven sightings of UFOs. One was observed to be a glowing object flashing at intervals and making a thunderous sound. Also, out 292 kilometers from Mount Everest, precisely in the northeast of Pokhara, another object was found. This happened to be a huge metallic disc-shaped object with a six-foot base and four feet in height in a crater. Number eight, attacks of the Sherpas. Sherpas are a Nepalese ethnic group renowned for their endurance at high altitudes. In an attempt to scale Mount Everest in 2014, a total number of 13 Sherpas died and another three went missing and presumed dead. Though a tragedy, Sherpas remain vital to some of the successful climbs of Mount Everest. But sometimes things can get messy. There has been more than one case of Sherpas attacking climbers. Griffith shared how he and his companions were attacked by Sherpas and had to flee for their lives. Griffith reporting from northeastern Nepal, the town that acts as the gateway to the Everest region, described a scene where 150 Sherpas got into a tense argument atop the mountain. Jonathan claimed the Sherpas kicked, punched, and even threw stones at them. He added that due to the unruly mob, they had to abort their tour, thanks to other climbers at the summit who came to their aid. Griffith also hailed Melissa Arnott, an American climber and the only woman to have scaled Everest, who alerted him and his two friends, Ueli Steck and Simone Moro, to the looming attack. To avoid further confrontations, they gathered their tools and without using the rope for protection, they fled the scene. They finished a two-day hike in little over three hours. Number seven, discovery of marine fossils, proof of biblical flood. In a stunning discovery that has baffled scientists, a team of researchers and climbers who got to the summit of the mountain have uncovered marine fossils on Mount Everest. The fossils, which include sea creatures such as ammonites, ostracods, trilobites, crinoids, and fish, have been dated to the Paleozoic era, a period that ended approximately 250 million years ago. While the discovery of marine fossils on a mountain may seem unusual, it is not entirely unexpected. Mount Everest and the surrounding Himalayan region were once part of a vast ocean floor before tectonic shifts caused the region to rise up and form the mountain range we see today. However, the discovery of marine fossils on Mount Everest has also sparked speculation among some religious groups who see it as possible evidence of the biblical flood. According to the book of Genesis, chapter 7, verse 1, the flood was a catastrophic event that occurred approximately 4,000 years ago, during which the entire world was submerged in water. While the discovery of marine fossils on Mount Everest may be consistent with the idea of a global flood, scientists caution that there is no conclusive evidence to support this theory. The geological processes that created the Himalayan region are well understood, and the presence of marine fossils can be explained by these processes without attaching supernatural beliefs. Nonetheless, the discovery of these fossils provides a fascinating glimpse into the history of our planet and underscores the ever-evolving nature of scientific inquiry. Number 6. Grasses and Shrubs growing on Mount Everest. Against all odds, grasses and shrubs have taken root on Mount Everest. For years, the peak was thought to be an inhospitable, barren wasteland, incapable of supporting any form of plant life. But recent studies have revealed that this is no longer the case. Grasses and shrubs have begun to take root on the slopes of Mount Everest, defying the odds and challenging our assumptions about the limits of life on Earth. New findings show a small but significant increase in vegetation across four height brackets above sea level. As the region's ice sheet continues to melt, the development of grass and bushes on Mount Everest and throughout the Himalayas has dramatically increased. With the use of scientific data, scientists discovered the growth of subnival vegetation, that is, plants growing between the tree line and snow line in a vast region. The discovery of these plants is a testament to the resilience of life and a reminder that even the harshest environments can eventually be conquered. 
It is also a cause for concern, however, as the presence of plant life on Everest could have far-reaching implications for the delicate balance of the mountain's ecosystem. Scientists are still trying to understand how these plants are managing to survive on the world's highest peak. Some theories suggest that rising temperatures and changing weather patterns may be creating more hospitable conditions for plant growth. Others speculate that the plants may be adapting to the extreme altitude and lack of oxygen in ways that we do not yet fully understand. The discovery of grasses and shrubs on Mount Everest is a fascinating development that underscores the power and adaptability of life on our planet. As scientists continue to study this phenomenon, we may learn valuable lessons about the resilience of life and the ways in which it can adapt and thrive in even the most challenging environments. Number 5. Disappearing Oxygen Tanks Oxygen tanks are a lifeline for climbers attempting to summit Mount Everest, as oxygen provides the necessary means to survive in the treacherous high-altitude environment. However, in recent years, an alarming trend has emerged. Oxygen tanks are disappearing from the mountain, leaving climbers stranded and in danger. Some speculate that disappearing oxygen tanks may be the result of theft by other climbers who are desperate for a supply of oxygen to aid in their own ascent. Others suggest that the tanks may be falling victim to the unforgiving environment of Mount Everest itself, becoming dislodged or buried in the snow and ice. This has caused many to abandon their well-planned expedition. Let's take, for instance, the case of a 27-year-old British climber, Rupert Jones Warner. He was determined to summit the mountain from both ends, through the Nepalese route and the Tibetan side. He set off, and after he completed the first summit, the second attempt was thwarted due to missing tanks. On his Facebook page, he posted this, Unfortunately, I was forced to abandon my second summit attempt due to missing oxygen. These issues of missing tanks remain unsolved as no thief has ever been caught with these supplemental oxygen canisters. Losing an oxygen tank on an expedition is like being hit by a thermonuclear bomb. When on Everest, you should hold tight on your tank. They are your breath. Number 4. Maurice Wilson Maurice Wilson is a renowned British soldier who single-handedly held a machine gun post against advancing Germans in 191. After this feat, he added Everest to his bucket list. His plan was to reach the summit alone, in his own way, in order to promote his belief in God. The Englishman in 1933 had prepared to fly into the northern slope of the Himalayan mountain, crash land his plane, and then solo climb to the summit. So he trained himself in hiking and how to fly a gypsy moth plane in Britain before moving to Darjeeling, where he prepared for his climb by fasting and praying, believing that was all he needed to reach the summit. Unfortunately, he crashed his gypsy right before his expedition even started, so he had to abandon the plan he had trained hard for. Then, on May 22, 1934, Wilson set off on foot across the Rongbuk Glacier, where he was eventually blocked by an ice wall probably because of his lack of skills or perhaps not having enough climbing equipment. In his diary, where he wrote all his moves and encounters, Wilson explained how he found a pair of crampons, an ice climbing iron, at an old camp. Instead of using this to his advantage, he threw them away. Later, a small reconnaissance led by Eric Shipton in 1935 found Wilson's body lying on its side in the snow surrounded by the remains of a tent which had been torn apart by elements. Also, lingerie and heel shoes were recovered at the scene. Was he trying to climb Everest with a heel shoe? Well, it was later discovered that he had been a cross-dresser before being possessed by the Everest mania. Reports showed that he had worked in a women's clothing store in New Zealand. Although his cause of death remains a mystery, we could say the weather was too much for him to bear. Number 3. The Third Person Frank Smythe, a British explorer and botanist, went to Everest Summit with other climbers. On their way, his entire crew went back to camp during the climb in 1933 as a result of the mountain's sweeping wind, ice and low oxygen levels, and snow. But Smythe continued despite the weather, and he gave a detailed report of an event that is now common among scientists as the third-person factor. The British explorer wrote about how he shared a Kendall mint cake with a colleague. He broke the cake into two halves and turned around to offer the other half to a colleague. Feels strange because he was alone during the trip, 
He said, all this time I was climbing alone, I got a strong feeling that I was accompanied by a second person. The feeling was so strong that I completely eliminated all loneliness I might otherwise have felt. Smythe case is not the only one. Also, in 1975, Doug Scott and Dougal Haston, two British mountaineers on their trip, got to the summit in the dead of the night. As they were forced to spend the night in the death zone with no oxygen, these men dug a snow hole like a nest and stayed the night. The windy night brought strange visitors, and the two climbers reported they had feelings of another presence in the snow cave with them. This stranger offered them body heat and gave suggestions to help them stay warm and alive. Also, climbers like Reinhold Messner, Peter Hillary, and Lincoln Hall also shared similar cases of stranger bodies coming to their aid on the mountain. Although many scientists had explained that the weather on Mount Everest drains energy from the brain and can make one hallucinate, the truth is, with the number of deaths lying fallow in Everest, it is unlikely that cases of this nature are not true. Number 2. Russian Expedition of 1952 Despite being over 50 years already, the Russian expedition of 1952 is a weird sorry that has never been clearly explained. According to historians, back in 1952, the Russian government sponsored an expedition to the summit of Mount Everest. If it was successful, it would have marked the first time anyone would have successfully made it to the top of the mountain. The idea was for the group to get to the summit and post pictures of landing at the top of the mountain with Russia claiming this victory as a win for the entire country. The report was that these mountaineers nearly made it to the top of Everest, and as they were making the final leg of their journey to the summit, they disappeared. They were hours to claiming their victory, but they vanished upon the face of the earth, never to be seen or heard from again. What makes the story so strange is that their body itself was never recovered. Also, none of their equipment has ever been found. By all means, it seems as if the expedition never existed, and that is certainly a possibility, because the Russian government doesn't shy away from controversies. When later asked about the expedition, the government itself refused to admit whether or not the expedition took place. It's possible the trip truly did happen and the government refused to speak about it, fear that they would be asked about the death of these brave climbers who went missing. However, if this is true, why have none of their bodies and belongings ever been recovered? Number 1. The Yeti Although relatively shorter compared to the Bigfoot of North America, the Yeti is a bipedal creature located in the mountains of the Himalayas. This creature is believed to weigh between 200 and 400 pounds, large and covered with brown, gray, or white hair, it is also described to have sharp teeth. But the locals' description of the Yeti seems a bit different. They believed that there are three varieties of Yetis. One is the Nialmo. Standing around 15 feet tall with black fur coverings, the Nialmo is one family of the Yeti that is argued to be the largest and the fiercest. The second is the Chuti. This is quite smaller compared to the Nialmo. Chuti is about 8 feet tall and lives 80000 to 10000 feet above sea level. Also, we have the Rangshim Bombo, which has reddish brown fur and is only 3 to 5 feet tall. In 1921, Charles Howard Barry, a British Irish explorer and botanist lieutenant colonel who led the British Mount Everest reconnaissance expedition, coined the name Abominable Snowman for the Yetis. The same year, Barry found multiple footprints of the creature at high altitudes. He later announced that the tracks were made by some loping gray wolf. Recent findings made by Joshua Gates and his team in 2009 found a strand of hair from the mysterious animal's footprints measuring 33 centimeters long and 25 centimeters across. When the hair was tested by a forensic analyst, the result was hard to believe. It was analyzed to contain an unknown DNA sequence resembling that of the Bigfoot and Loch Ness monsters. As it stands, there seems to be no concrete evidence that the Yeti exists, but this has not discouraged some who still believe in its existence. We hope you enjoyed this video. We'll see you in the next one.